Welcome and thanks for joining us for this episode of Scope. Yangru Sausia district in the East Sipik province is aiming high by putting effort into elevating the educational status of the district to be one of the top performing provinces academically. The district development authority with the backing of the member of parliament Richard Maru envisaged to improve the living standard of the people to be like other modern style villages in other districts. Member for Yangru Sausia, Richard Maru, has a dream of exporting human capital from his district because there are no large income generating resources such as minerals and large commercial viable commodities. As the saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Thus, Yangoru Sausia District in the East Sipik province embarked on introducing a school of excellence to improve on the past performance of students' academic performance in the national exams. With poor performance, a very small percentage of grade 12 graduates were making it to universities and other higher institutions in the country. In a span of four years, the District Development Authority, with the local member as chairman of the authority, made a turnaround in the grade 12 students' performance. We want to have quality. We want to have bright kids, highly talented, highly skilled, who can not only go and find jobs in PNG, but be as good as anyone in the world. And go to the global market, like what the Australians do, and the Filipinos are doing, and the rest of the world is doing. So we changed the policy, and when I became planning minister, I had a good look at my own district. This dream has become a reality with the delivery of educational infrastructure in most, if not all, of the LLGs in the district during this time of parliament. On May 5th, the Deputy Australian High Commissioner to PNG, Dr. Joan Londis, arrived in Yangoru Station to officially open the School of Excellence. People of Yangoru South here turned up in numbers to witness the opening of the Gateway to Opportunities, Yangoru School of Excellence. It was a proud moment of achievement for the sitting member. The School of Excellence tops up the unprecedented community development projects all around the district. Maru said out of the seven high schools in the district, 1,000 students were passing out of grade 12 every year, but less than 10 were making it to universities. Because we didn't invest in quality. We were investing in quantity. Less than 10 students from the entire school system of Yangru Sausia were going to universities directly from schools within the district. Less than 1% is a very poor result by any standard. Going fast forward, the members sought the assistance from the former Australian High Commissioner Bruce Davis to partner with him in establishing a school of excellence in the district. I thank that great man for the foresight and the vision to partner my dream to change the course of Yangur Sausia by coming up with a school of excellence concept. Initially as a pilot for our district and subject to success, we wanted to roll this scheme to all the rural districts of Papua New Guinea, where the academic results are very, very poor. After negotiations, an 18 million kina was granted by the Australian government for the project of a whole new school to start in 2019 and is a success. Mrs. Maro, our principal, fast forward last year, in the entire system, we've gone from less than 10 to over 24, including one from Kubalia. This is a 200% improvement. Only because the School of Excellence concept was introduced, thanks to, thanks to the Australian government. The Australian Deputy High Commissioner, Dr. Joanne Londis, was present for the opening. She surprised all by starting her address in Tokpisin. 
Australia is save all sem education. Emi number one priority belong halivim all pikinini long kissim save. Time all pikinini got good plus school building. Now all masin belong yusim long kissim save. All by hamamas long school good. Dr. Londis expressed satisfaction of the PNG Australia partnership that has worked together to ensure life transforming changes to happen as was seen today. We're really pleased to say to build three new classrooms, a computing classroom, three science laboratories, a library, storage areas, plus the new dormitories for students and for teachers. So we've built um, new dormitories that will house 60 um, female students and 60 uh, male students. So we're really pleased about that addition uh, to, the boarding, to the boarding part of this school. And just on that note, before I actually continue on with the rest of my speech, I too went to boarding school for the last two years of high school, year 11 and 12. Um, when I was younger, my town did not have year 11 and 12, so I had to, had to leave my family to go to that. So I understand for those of you who are boarding here at school, it's sometimes really hard when you're not near your family and friends, but hang in there, it is absolutely critical and you have a great school to go to that will um, support you. Lundes said this infrastructure establishment is one of the first steps taken, that the learning facilities will not only create more reliable and a more comfortable learning environment for the students and teachers, it's also going to extend the learning opportunities for students, particularly girls who are interested in pursuing science and computing subjects. So for Australia, it's always been an extremely um, high priority for us, education. Uh, but as the Honourable Member said, it doesn't, it's not just education, it has to be quality education. Um, it has to be accessible education. Dr Lundes went on to express concern about the importance of girls completing their primary and secondary education and going on to university level of education. So Australia wants to thank the younger community and the school community for their ongoing commitment to education, sustainability and the development of PNG. Because without your support and the dedication, none of this would have been possible, absolutely none. With the best results coming out of the Pioneer Grade 12 in 2021, Yangoru South Sea District Development Authority is hopeful that the Australian government will continue the partnership into the future with an additional assistance to also include a social science and humanities trend to complement the STEM strand they currently have. When we come back, Manus embraces fisheries programs and looks forward to enhancing fishing projects. On the 25th of April, the Lorengau Fisheries Facility Project was launched with the recommissioning of the fish market by Prime Minister James Marape and Fisheries Minister Dr. Lino Tom with other government heads of state and NFA and JICA officials. The fisheries facility is jointly funded by the Japanese government's Overseas Fishery Corporation Foundation and the National Fisheries Authority at a cost of 800,000 kina. This facility is just one of the components of the bigger concept of coastal fisheries hub in Manus province. The Government of Japan, through its Overseas Fishery Corporation Foundation, has supported and funded certain fisheries facilities in Papua New Guinea since 2006 after the resigning of the Fishing Access Agreement with the Japanese Persian Association. There are so far 15 fisheries facilities funded since the inception of the program in 2006. The Loringa Fisheries Facility has been supported and counterpart funded by OFCF and NFA for the second time given the demand created by the private sector. The OFCF program on the rehabilitation and restoration of the Coastal Fisheries Center began in 2006 
This program has grown from strength to strength, driven by the strong and mutual bilateral cooperation between the government of PNG and Japan. The OFCF is now in its 16th year supporting NFA to assist provinces to rehabilitate fishery centers and equipped with ice-making machines, cooling rooms and other fisheries-related equipments to support provinces to develop coastal fisheries in the country. Being one of the parts of the Coastal Fisheries Hub bigger concept, the concept aims to address the national government's objective to address food security, wealth creation, employment and improvement of livelihood of the people. This augurs well for Manus given the fact that the province's population rely on the fisheries and marine resources for their livelihood. The sea is the province's biggest and the only natural resources. This therefore calls for the need to build vital coastal fisheries infrastructures and facilities that can create a vehicle for fisheries investments. These fisheries development is tailored towards the implementation of the Fisheries Strategic Plan 2021-2030, to wherein NFA's mission that stipulates that Papua New Guinea fisheries sector will be developed to be strong, broad-based, diversified and value-adding industry that is globally competitive, domestically inclusive and functioning as a robust and sustainable source of government revenue, food security and livelihood for the people of PNG can be achieved. Specifically for Manus, coastal fisheries development is to complement the national government's commitment to Manus Special Economic Region, redevelopment of Momote Airport and the Lorengau Port Development. At the launching of the Lorengau facility on 25th April 2022, Pomalu Nangisan Parliamentary Chairman to Natural Resource Centre, in which fisheries comes under, said Manus has a vast sea landmass and with this development of coastal fisheries. The Manus people and the provincial government appreciate and acknowledge the launching of this project and Thank the support you, speech, of the stakeholders. Will, Ambassador of Japan uh, to Papua New Guinea, Nobuyuki Watanabe, uh, said especially uh, for the, the agriculture Manus field, Japan has a deep relationship uh, with Manus. The Japan Conservatory has imported almost 40,000 tuna from this area and therefore close in relation with the fisheries field in Manus and PNG. He said in some fishery ports in PNG, Japan have a corporation in place that has helped to construct fisheries centers. Japan donated to the facility in Manus with container refrigerators with a dispatch of Japanese fisheries experts working in collaboration with NFA to broaden and promote in the fisheries areas. NFA it's Acting Managing Director Justin Ilekini said Prime Minister but, 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 James Marape gave a clear directive to fisheries through Minister Dr. Lino Tom to have a sector that is broad-based. A sector that is not dependent on tuna, and all of you know that uh, tuna fishery is Papua New Guinea's biggest and the most valuable resource. But the majority of people do not directly participate in tuna. They participate in coastal fisheries, inland fisheries, and agricultural fisheries. So in response to the government directive, for the last uh, a little over two and a half years, we did everything possible to make sure that we respond to the policy directive. And Prime Minister, this afternoon, you're here to witness a implementation of that policy where we have worked very closely with development partners like JICA and a bilateral, uh, access, uh, bilateral uh, agreement with an important uh, development partner like uh, Japan through JICA and OFCF in building uh, coastal fisheries, vital coastal fisheries development facilities and infrastructures in coastal maritime provinces. Mr. Ilakini said that fisheries in Manus would be the only resource that the people are able to identify with and in recognition of that NFA, under a strategic plan launched by Prime Minister in 2021, made a concerted effort making sure that 80 to 90 percent of people involved in the fisheries sector, especially coastal fisheries, can directly participate through a number of empowerment project initiatives. He was delighted to see that some of the projects have come into fruition, like the Women's Fisheries Program. Fisheries Minister Dr. Lino Tom, in his brief remarks, reiterated from NFA Acting MD and told the Prime Minister 
that what he witnessed at the launch of the facility was the realization of his vision. We realized that Tuna, which uh, caters for about 95% of the revenue we generate in NFA, is actually, um, actually all big black companies, all Saipatai Club, this industry. But our Lion Long Plus, and you know Patek Long Tuna industry. You missed up nothing. So, vision for government, and long reach out, long all this line long place. So, in line, want them this now. Me plan like try and promote them coastal fisheries, inland fisheries, now this line something where me plan make him that this facility where me plan got him now. Me plan like talk, thank you, Lord Japanese government. Huh? Prime Minister, Japan government, we have a lot of important partnership programs with them. The facility makes it easy and safe for the people to process and to store their catch while maintaining and integrating the quality of the fish. This helps to put money back into the pockets of the people. Dr. Lino Tom said the next phase of their project would be the construction of a jetty for the fishermen to properly bring in the catch. This initiative will cost NFA around 5 million kina. After the break, a look at a seaweed project on Liu Liu Island and the Drauke Special Fishing Hub. The International Day of Sports for Development and Peace is celebrated the world over to recognize sports as a tool for championing human rights and promoting sustainable development since 2017. The global celebrations took place on the 6th of April 2022 with the theme Securing a Sustainable and Peaceful Future for All, the Contribution of Sport. This year's celebrations were staged in four centers of the four regions under the PNG League Belong Life program. Okay, ready? Go, go, go. NRL PNG Games Development Officer Roland Andara said this year they have decided to involve children with special needs to promote their inclusive programs in sports. The International Day of Sports for Development and Peace 2022 was celebrated at the four regional centers, Port Mosby, Ley, Goroka, and Kokopo, under the NRL in PNG League Blue Live program. The IDSDP is a worldwide event sanctioned by the United Nations under this year's theme, securing a sustainable and peaceful future for all, the contribution of sports. The NRL in PNG, under the League Blue Live program, hosted the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace on April 6, 2022. At the Sir John Guy's Outdoor Stadium, Port Mosby, the event was celebrated with various fun games and sporting activities. For the first time, this year's celebration involved children from the Cheshire Homes and Full Gospel Academy Hoola as part of their inclusive program. NRL PNG Games Development Officer Roland Andara said this year they have decided to involve children with special needs to promote their inclusive program in sports. You know, as part of our uh, NRL in PNG, uh, inclusiveness in sports, regardless of you know, one's um, ability or disability, uh, we like to be inclusive of kids, you know, getting them involved you know, and making them feel normal, you know, regardless of their you know, um, special needs and whatsoever. The so kids get to play with their peers and um, um, you know, using sports that uh, using sports to cut through the barriers. You know, um, yeah, it's a good idea. We have uh, we have different stations set up um, on the hockey side as well. And for uh, rugby league, we have um, our spelling competitions for uh, our smaller kids. For the bigger kids, we have um, a road in the nest using using rugby league skills in a fun game for the kids. You know, getting their hands dirty, having fun out there. So the whole idea behind this day was to get kids to have fun. Um, normally we go to the schools to visit them, but this was the first for them, having the kids you know, come over to say, don't guys the video and then, um, them, having them coming to you know, world class uh, 
sports facilities like this. And, um, it was an eye opener for the parents and the kids as well. The celebrations also brought out joy and laughter from some parents and guardians who came out to support the boys and girls participate in the various fun games. Firstly, we thank you to uh, NRL for organizing this. Uh, we need to include um, other sports to come into. Hockey was here, uh, soccer is not here, but I mean, let's give the children uh, not. Uh, doesn't mean disabled uh, children, but any children now. Uh, we get the uh, opportunity to choose what sport they want to play. Because when they do that, uh, we, will, we need to improve, we need to develop through sports. To the, uh, that's what we believe the sports should make a, should also make a difference. Uh, promotes uh, IT respect, teamwork, and now the Chesa home kids combined with them. Um, I see the team of work is also inclusion, so that is very good. Partnering with NRL and PNG for the Lake Blow Life program is Hook In for Health, a sports and development program that organizes fun games for young children from the Cheshire Homes and Full Gospel Academy. They use the hockey drills and show the basics of the sport. Coordinator Raymond Lapun said Hookin for Health is also a sports and development program that helps with the well-being and health of all gender from women, men and boys and girls and people with special needs. The kids are excited yes. about hockey. A lot of these kids are to join up with hockey and they would love to see you there. It's just um, the teachers that do them out because of the way that hockey, we hockey to play on wet chair, so we get used to play on wet. So it's unfortunate that the weather is not fine, but the kids would love to come to work. With this program, I'm actually building the program, um, and this is for our development officers. This is where you find out. We get, we got into this program to find development officers to go out and um, deliver a few products. Among parents and guardians was NRL game development officer and former PNG Orchids player Della Auduma. Della shares some of her sporting experiences and stories to motivate and inspire the young boys and girls, regardless of gender, race, ability, disability, or religion. Sometimes in life you, you will have people telling you uh, negative thoughts, really negative thoughts that you cannot do it, but always have a goal in life, whether you are uh, people with special needs or whether you are uneducated, you have to be, be strong and then you have a goal in life. You want to be a rugby player, it doesn't matter if you are uneducated, if you are male, if you are female, or it doesn't matter if you are Della said although she did not excel in her education, playing sports has enabled her to achieve some of her personal goals in life. This is a pathway to a better future. So for special students, you want to participate in any sport, not only rugby league, we have to budget the time to stay in school and in play sports. For me as uh, individual, sports has given me uh, a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity in life. Sports has taken me to places where I don't expect in life. I've gone overseas to sports. And sports has given me uh, been where I'm now, making me done again and also playing the rugby. Sports is a sports for me, sports is a platform that uh, provides uh, a lot of things in life. Uh, stay in school, and if you want to start a career sport, please be part of the sport. And that ends scope this evening. A kind reminder to apply simple measures to prevent the transmission of the coronavirus. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water, cough or sneeze into your elbow, and exercise social distancing. If you are feeling sick, please stay at home. 
You can also call the COVID-19 hotline number for more information or assistance. Thank you for your company. Bye for now.